and we're back in my truck. So uh, we're on our way to a service call. It's the Linux mini split. It's giving me an E1 code, which I believe is a communication error. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it and see what's going on. So here we go. Okay, so the unit will run for about three and a half minutes and then it shuts off and displays an E1 code. I cannot find a service manual for this unit. This is an E, what is this? This is an MS7 Linux. And I cannot find an error code. All I get is that AI junk. And it's saying that's a transmission error between indoor and outdoor, which I highly doubt because in cooling mode, it runs fine. This only happens in heat mode. So right now I have it in cool mode. I'm gonna let it run for about five minutes, see if it gives me the same code. But apparently it runs fine and cool. So uh, I have noticed that somebody has charged refrigerant in it because there is dye injected in here, which sucks because I had to put some gauges on. I'm thinking maybe it's overcharged. That's the only thing I can think of. I don't think there's a con error. So yeah, and I tried looking at the M8 or MS8 and the E1 code doesn't even exist on that service manual, which I was able to find, but I can't find an ES7, or I'm sorry, an MS7-HO unit service manual. The only one I can find doesn't have any of the error codes listed. It just says there are error codes and they tell you what's wrong with it, but it doesn't give me a list of what the error codes mean. So yeah, and this is basically a Medea. So I even tried searching for a Medea, but couldn't find it. So yeah, we'll just, we're gonna go ahead and let this thing cool and see what it does. All right, so while I've been on hold with Linux trying to figure out what a, what a E1 code is, it's definitely not communication. I ran it in cool and it ran for a long time, no issue. I put it back in heat and I hooked up a gauge and I'm gonna show you here, um, but right before, right here, that's, look at how high the pressure is in heat mode. So um, the fact that there's a die sticker on here tells me that somebody charged it without weighing it in and they overcharged it um, and that's why our pressure is going too high and E1 is probably saying high pressure shut off so we're going to check the indoor coil make sure it's clear and make sure the filters are clean because if those are dirty that can high, cause high pressure as well I don't think that's the case because there's a pretty good amount of airflow but I could be wrong so we're going to check that first and if that's not the case then uh, uh, we're going to have to probably take some refrigerant out and see what happens. So here we go. There's the E1 code. Filters are good. I know the blower is working. So the connections there look fine as far as leak goes. So usually when you put dye in, that's because you couldn't find the leak. It's because I'm guessing my connections are back here. So we're gonna cut that open and check it because what I'm probably gonna end up do, doing is uh, recovering the refrigerant, um, pressure testing, fixing the leak, pulling a vacuum and weighing in the charge. So I got to get this off. You could tell this has never been removed. But man, I got to say, whoever did this uh, sheet metal work did a great job. How clean that is. Look at that. Oh, anyway. All right, we got that off. Look at this. <laughs> what the heck is this? <laughs> oh my God, what is this? Why is there so much wire? That's the comm wire. All right, well, anyway, there's our connector. So we'll go ahead and see if that thing's leaking. And the drain line's not even plugged into this PVC. Okay, so I'm checking for leaks. I haven't found anything so far. There's no oil, no obvious signs. So the leak is probably somewhere else, not at the connections. Um, this is the uh, forensics detector, uh, refrigerant leak detector, and does it do A2L? It's a FD92 is the um, model number. So I've been using it now for a while. Uh, I will be doing a review on it, but uh, I like to use like stuff like this. I like to use for a long period of time before I, uh, you know, really get it. And I got it during the winter, so I wasn't doing a lot of leak searches for refrigerant. So during the summer. Um, I used it quite a bit and pretty happy with it so far. And it's pretty affordable. But anyway, enough of that. Uh, we're gonna start checking the coil in all the obvious positions, see if we can find this leak. 
because if I remove the refrigerant, I'm going to have to fix the leak before I can pull a vacuum. And it could have just been the Schrader core leaked. And then we'll check these service valves as well. I'm just going to be checking down here. Some of these units don't have pan heaters. So sometimes they will crack at the bottom because of the ice. And there's no pan heater. I've already checked in there, so let's check the indoor coil. Well, now that I've swapped over to these gauges, there's plenty of dye in there. Anyway, we're going to watch our pressure. We do have it in heat mode. I haven't heard the, um, the reversing valve hasn't kicked on yet. There it goes. All right. So our pressure should start to increase. Once I hit about 500 PSI, I'm going to go ahead and remove a little bit because they don't want to do the proper charge. Yeah. So to do so, we will open this up. And zero that out. And we will open this up and it'll dump it into the, into there. Once I hit about 500 PSI. And that helps I can keep track of how much I remove. So I looked at the other invoice from the other company and they put in two additional pounds. This thing holds 91.71 pounds, or I'm sorry, ounces. So I'm going to wait till the pressure is maxed out and then I'll start letting some out. Okay, so I'm letting out, I'm going to let out about a pound. I'm at seven ounces right now. You can see that's all our refrigerant coming out. The pressures are kind of dropping. Usually I like to see about, I don't know, like around like 380, 400. I'll stop at a pound and then we're gonna let it run for a while and see what's up. All right, so I let out about a pound and a half total. Um, she's been kind of hanging out there. I'm gonna let it run. For, um, I started a timer, I'm at four minutes, so it's already lasted longer than it used to. Uh, so I'm gonna let it run for a little bit longer. I'm gonna be slowly putting my four stuff minutes. away. Counting down. And then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so uh, all done there. Uh, so that's how you don't fix a mini split. Um, the mini split there, uh, the real way of doing it would be to recover this refrigerant, pressurize with nitrogen, fix the leak, pull a vacuum, weigh in the charge. That's how you're supposed to do it. Why I didn't do it that way? Well, nobody wants to pay for me to do it the right way, but they still want the thing to work. And this is a rental, so that explains a lot right there. So anyway, um, apparently what had happened was uh, it was freezing, somebody came out, charged it up, put dye in it, and left. And well, obviously they charged it up a little too much. You have to be very careful when you charge these things without actually weighing in the charge. Um, as you saw in a previous video uh, where I've done it, <laughs> you gotta be very careful because what happens is during the winter, uh, then your pressure's too high. You can get away with a little bit of an overcharge on cooling mode, but not in heating mode. Otherwise you get crazy pressures like that. So, um, but yeah, as you saw, the pressures did balance out. Um, I, after removing about a pound and a half, uh, the pressure settled around 410 PSI. It's probably still slightly overcharged, but I didn't want to take too much out because I still want it to cool. I did run the cooling mode. It still, still seemed to be okay. I was getting about 112 uh, PSI. And uh, so we should be okay. I couldn't find the leak. I looked everywhere. Got dye all over my equipment. It's wonderful. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you come across this situation where you have a high pressure, you can actually let it out of the discharge line in heat mode. So what I did is I had it in heat mode, waited till the pressure got high, and then I just dumped it out into a recovery cylinder. Um, so yeah, that's an option you can do. But again, during the summer, it might not have enough refrigerant for it to cool properly. So we'll see how that goes. So anyway, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram, Facebook. If you want to support the channel, pick up some tools from my tool store, light bar, light bar, uh, or get some work socks from uh, Camel City Mill using uh, my code Nighthawk10. Thanks for watching.